So learning how to make all these different sumi brush strokes uh, will develop your sensitivity for handling the brush and to how to handle any kind of water media uh, and actually any kind of uh, painting, even drawing styles, will be influenced by your ability to control and manipulate the sumi brush. So uh, it will also teach you one of the great virtues which the sumi brush has, which is saying a lot with a little. So what we want to do is be able to not only practice traditional strokes, but be able to make up your own strokes or experiment. So I'm just going to start a series, see how many different ways I can approach the brush on a couple of pages, just then as, a, as an example of the experimental approach. And I'll start warming up with some of the strokes I already know are interesting, just getting the smoothness of a long stroke like that. And, but at this time, I'm going to react to the brush every time, whatever it does. So I've got that interesting curve in there. I'm going to see what I can do with that. I've also got this interesting point here. And by moving very quickly, I get a very smooth stroke. If I move slower, it's going to have a different sort of appearance, a little heavier and thicker. Now, if I turn the brush on its side, starting just gradually and just see what happens. And you notice that there's a big difference between the way the brush starts, where you touch the page, and where, where you end, and the way the ink gathers as you lift it off. And uh, you'll also notice that as I'm going, I'm exhausting the ink on the brush. And so I'm getting new shapes on the brush, and I'm also getting new tones out of the brush. So still trying to take advantage of the interesting natural shape of the brush. I'm just exploring some of the things that come out of this split brush or spread brush. just exploring. And the variations are really endless. I particularly like when I get this dry brush, brush effect, getting a sort of meandering kind of a look to the stroke. Can also make sort of wavelets. Or even shorter. OK, let's see what we can do on the next page. OK, we've also seen that we can change the size of the brush. So and remember, we always start off with the brush wet. Has to be soaked a little bit. So let's see what happens when I start working with the big brush, and maybe a little freer. Just getting a little more variation in the stroke. Here's another possibility we haven't looked at before. This is rolling the brush. Gives a really cool effect like tree bark. And as I mentioned, as we know, we've also got the touches, the presses and touches. And of course, we can press and twist. And that's where we really sort of get into the character of the brush as lifting, changing the pressure, changing the movement. And even a large brush like this, at a certain point, the brush can provide very nice thin lines.
that's one of the things that I love about this. The large brushes is the variety.